In this video on transforming functions graphs, we learn about reflections. In particular, we learn how to reflect a curve across the x-axis and how to reflect a curve across the y-axis. So let's get started. At the bottom of the screen here, I've drawn two times the same graph. And in each case, that's the curve y equals to f of x, where f of x is the function whose equation is given here. That's negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. And on the left-hand side here, we'll learn how to reflect this graph across the x-axis. And on the right-hand side, we'll learn how to reflect it across the y-axis. And what we'll be learning here will work for any curve whose equation is given by some function. So y equals to f of x. Okay, now to reflect a curve across the x-axis, we transform it as follows. y equals to negative f of x. Or simply, we could read this as y equals to the opposite of f of x. And I'll go ahead and box that. Now, looking at this transformation, we can tell that it's a vertical transformation and will therefore be affecting the y-coordinates of this curve. And the reason for that is that the change that's being made to f of x takes place on the outside of the function. In other words, it's not inside these parentheses here. Remember, any change that we make on the outside of the function will be a vertical transformation and will therefore affect its y-coordinates. And the way this transformation works is by changing every single y-coordinate of this curve into its opposite. So for instance, the vertex we have here has coordinates 1, 4. Well, following this transformation, its y-coordinate, 4, will turn into its opposite, which of course is negative 4. The x-coordinate, on the other hand, will not be affected, and so the vertex will end up right here, with coordinates 1, negative 4. Next, if I look at this point here, the y-intercept, its coordinates are 0, 3. And so following this transformation, this point's y-coordinate will turn into its opposite, which would be negative 3. And so that y-intercept would be right here. And I'll write negative 3. Carrying on, I look at the two x-intercepts we have. We have this one here with coordinates negative 1, 0, and the other one here with coordinates 3, 0. And following this transformation, the y-coordinates of these points will turn into their opposites. But the opposite of 0 is just 0. And so the x-intercepts will remain the same. And now keeping in mind that this transformation turns every single y-coordinate of every single point along this curve into its opposite, the transformed curve ends up being the reflection of y equals to f of x across the x-axis. And will look something like this. And there we go. That's the curve y equals to the opposite of f of x. And if ever we had to find this new curve's equation, all we have to do is consider the opposite of f of x. In other words, this function's equation is y equals to the opposite of, in parentheses, the expression we have for f of x. So that was negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. And now to open up this pair of parentheses, I take the opposite of every single term I see inside. And that would be y equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we're done. Okay, let's see how to reflect a curve across the y-axis. Well, again, given any curve y equals to f of x, we can reflect it across the y-axis with the transformation y equals to f of negative x. Or you could also read this as y equals to f of the opposite of x. And I'll go ahead and box that. Looking at this transformation, we can tell right away that we're dealing with a horizontal transformation. And the reason for that is that when comparing y equals to f of negative x to y equals to f of x, the changes that we're making happen inside the function. In other words, inside these two parentheses. What that means is that we're changing the input. And changing the input is what will change the x-coordinates of our original function's curve. And so it's a horizontal transformation. Now the way this transformation works is by turning the x-coordinate of every single point on the curve of y equals to f of x into its opposite. And so for instance, this x-intercept here, whose coordinates are negative 1, 0, will turn into the point whose x-coordinate is the opposite of negative 1, which would be 1. And so that x-intercept ends up right here, at 1. Now, looking at the y-intercept, its coordinates are 0, 3, 
and in theory this point will turn into the point whose x-coordinate is the opposite of zero. But since that's just zero, the y-intercept stays right where it is. So I move on to the vertex with coordinates 1, 4. Well, following this transformation, this point will turn into the point whose x-coordinate is the opposite of 1, which would be negative 1. And since the y-coordinate is unaffected, that would be the point right here, with coordinates negative 1, 4. I carry on and look at the second x-intercept we have here, whose coordinates are 3, 0. Well, following this transformation, this point will turn into the point whose x-coordinate is the opposite of 3, and that would be negative 3 right there. Notice that following this transformation, each of the new points we've obtained is the reflection of its corresponding point on y equals to f of x across the y-axis. And so keeping that in mind and drawing the parabola passing through these points, we obtain the following. And there we go. That's the curve y equals to f of negative x. And if ever we need to find the equation of this new curve, all we have to do is copy the expression we have for f of x, but we replace every single x we see by negative x. And my advice would be to write that negative x inside a pair of parentheses. Here's what I mean. This new curve's equation would be y equals to negative negative x in parentheses squared plus 2 times negative x plus 3. Now for this first term here we have negative x in parentheses squared, and that's x squared. So we have negative x squared, and I write that here, that's y equals to negative x squared. And for the middle term here we have 2 times negative x, so that turns into minus 2x, and we have plus 3 at the end there. There we go. We now know the transformations for reflecting a curve across the x-axis and across the y-axis. Remember, when reflecting across the x-axis, the transformation y equals to negative f of x turns every single y-coordinate of the original curve into its opposite. On the other hand, when reflecting across the y-axis, the transformation y equals to f of negative x turns every single x-coordinate we have on our original curve into its opposite, and the result of that is to reflect it across the y-axis. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial.